Good. Been established at, um, we do have a quorum and we're going to move to um, start the meeting. Um, can I get a motion to um, adopt the agenda, please? So moved. Second. Okay, it's properly moved and second. Um, I believe um, Dr. Morris motion yes. and um, Smith second. Correct. Very good. Um, we're going to go ahead and call the roll, please. Please call the roll, Ms. Jernigan. Okay. Mr. Huggins? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Tracio? Yes. Ms. Mood? Here. Ms. Leeton? Ms. Dickerson? Here. Mr. Anderson? Mr. Lawson? I'm here. Mr. Walker's here. Okay. Representative Howard. Mr. Fergus. Dr. Morris. Here. here. Mr. Jenkins. I'm here. Ms. Summers. Mr. Coon. Present. Mr. Green. Mr. Or, I'm sorry, Ms. Robinson. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker's here. Mr. Kane. And Mr. Unthink. Here. Oh, boy. And Paige. Paige, I'm here now. I'm sorry. I had to switch off for a second. Oh, okay. Mike Green. There was a motion on the floor to adopt the agenda. Yes. So you can do the roll call for oh, okay. on the on the agenda. Okay. Um, I mean, Sanders. Okay. Hey, Mr. I, I would repeat. Uh, so do the roll call again but for the motion on the floor. Okay. The agenda. Now I'm going to do the roll call for the motion on the floor, which is the adoption of the agenda. Mr. Huggins. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. yes. Mr. Ratio? Yes. Ms. Mood? Yes. Uh, Ms. Uh, Dickerson? Yes. Ms. Leeton? Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Representative Howard? Mr. Burgess? And Dr. Morris. Here. Very good. So we have adoption of the agenda. Mr. Um, and just for the um, for board members just to know who's in the room with us, uh, Mr. Ando, will you state uh, who's in the room, please? Uh, yes, Mr. Vice Chairman. I have uh, myself, uh, John Ando, uh, Paige Jernigan, uh, Leroy DeChamp, uh, Tanisha Gibson, and Attorney Pam Baker. Very good. All right, uh, Mr. Ando, is there any representative of the Midlands Transit Rise Association present? Uh, we do not have a representative from the Midlands Transit Riders Association at this time. Okay, very good. Adam, um, uh, item four. Mr. Uh, Chair. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. This is Joyce. Uh, I have a dental appointment. I, I'm going to have to leave the meeting in about 30 minutes, but I wanted to be sure that I was here to make sure you had a quorum. Uh, but I will have to be leaving in about 30, 45 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Um, Dickerson. I appreciate you um, coming in to make sure that we had a quorum today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Call to the public. Um, no one signed up to call to the public, Ms. Hando. No, Mr. President. Okay, very good. That brings us to item number five, the consent agenda. Um, 
Is there a motion to adopt the uh, consent agenda? Okay. So moved. Okay, second. Items that, second. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what we're going to do first, uh, thank you, Ms. Anderson. What I'm going to do is just read the items. I'm sure you have them in front of you. Approval of the uh, board minutes, finance committee award propane contract, finance committee increase the subsidy on Lyft and Uber, and um, item D, approval of the invoice payment selection list in, ending November 30th, 2020. Okay, is there, it's been properly moved and second. Uh, if you will, do a roll call, Mr. Jernigan. Mr. Huggins? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Tracy? Yes. Ms. Mood? Yes. Ms. Dickerson? Yes. Ms. Gleaton? <laughs> yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Representative Howard? Mr. Burgess? Dr. Morris? Yes. yes. Very good. Um, send, uh, agenda passes. Consent agenda passes. Um, item number six, Mr. Ando. Yes, Mr. Vice Chair, member, Chairman, and members of the board. Uh, today I would like to update the board about Comet Central. Uh, this is a request that came out of the Finance Committee as it relates to the use of armed versus unarmed security guards at Common Central. Uh, some background so that the board is aware. Um, since 2015, our prime contractor provided contracted security uh, through New Age Security. Um, in July of 2020, uh, we executed an interim contract while we went through the formal RFP process. Um, at the September Board of Directors meeting, the board authorized the executive director to negotiate a contract and upon execution and upon successful negotiations execute a contract with new day security however to also report back to the board having a discussion related to armed versus unarmed guards at common central we do have a comprehensive security program to protect our assets passengers employees and contractors and we spend about one percent of our federal funds to cover these costs as part of that, we have security guards that are at Comet Central during the operating hours. And in the past, they've been on, uh, armed guards without citation or arresting powers. We have a contract with the City of Columbia to provide off-duty police officers to supplement the security guards uh, during the hours of Comet Central, seven days a week. And we have another officer to ride Comet buses and patrol bus stops within the City of Columbia, seven days a week. We then have a contract with Richland County Sheriff to provide off-duty deputies to ride common buses and patrol bus stops in unincorporated Richland County Monday through Friday. We have a contract with City of Casey Police to provide off-duty officers to ride bus routes in Casey, West Columbia, and Springdale four days a week for three hours. And then we have a contract with City Center Partnerships to provide a yellow shirt ambassador. Um, that's more of a report, uh, observe and report type of a arrangement and they also provide maintenance services and customer service at Common Central seven days a week. They also pressure wash our sidewalks. And lastly, we have an RATP Dev Operations Supervisor that is there seven days a week that also just provides customer service. So um, on November 9th, um, staff, myself, which is as well as Leroy DeChamp and Tanisha Gibbons, we convened a meeting to discuss armed versus unarmed uh, with City of Columbia, City Center Partnership, and the proposed security contractor. Um, as part of that meeting, um, what we've learned is that with the Columbia Police Department and the contracted security having, um, being armed with batons, uh, guns, and appropriate like pepper sprays and mace, that the criminal, the significant criminal criminal activity that occurred at Thomas Central over the past two years has declined compared to when we only had an armed guard and no police officers there. What generally has occurred is that the armed guard, if something was seriously happening at Thomas Central, 
the armed guard would coordinate with the Columbia police officer to take appropriate action, including assisting that police officer to do the necessary detention. The Yellowstone ambassador comes through on an hourly basis and just basically provides another set of eyes and ears uh, within the common central building as well as the bus stop zone between uh, Laurel all the way down to Sumter and Landing. The participants concluded that they felt it would be appropriate to continue to have the guard be armed so that that guard could provide that extra support to the city of Columbia police officer um, in case when situations have, uh, occur. Uh, and that collectively the parties would work together to assure that there's effective security at Comet Central and that the use of force would only be, need, would only be used if truly warranted. Uh, in the last two years since we've entered into the contract with City of Columbia as well as supplementing the security force, there has not been any use of handcuffs, or tasers, or pepper, I'm sorry, there has not been any use of a gun or a baton for any of the criminal activity that has occurred. There has been use of handcuffs, tasers, and pepper spray for when significant situations have occurred in the past. Uh, this collaborative community policing effort has significantly helped in reducing, again, the criminal activity at Commons Central. Um, I do have Leroy and Tanisha that can also supplement this information, and I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any. Any questions from the board members, please? Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. And I, I, I noticed that Mr. Ando um, list a number of different kinds of weapons that um, have could could be used: um, handcuffs, taser, pepper spray, batons, and and then also guns. So I'm I'm wondering if we're considering um, our guards being armed um, with any of those things. Um, my preference would be that we arm them, but n but with non-lethal weapons. So anything on that list sounds good to me, except giving guns to our our security guards. Um, and I'm I'm just wondering if we if we're trying to take a policy policy position on whether they should be armed, if we might modify that to talk about being armed with non-lethal weapons. Mr. 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 Sorry. Okay, Mr. Ando, um, it's been noted that um, Ms. Moo does have a um, consider uh, a concern, and um, maybe it's a situation um, that we can further study this um, with our subject matter experts in this area. Uh, would you like to expand a little bit more on this, Mr. Ando? Yes, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, and uh, Ms. Moo, and members of the board. Um, while that approach could work, what does happen sometimes is that the City of Columbia, because we're using off-duty police officers, there are times when they may not be able to send an off-duty officer. And what ends up happening is that they'll notify us, and then we ask the security guard company to send a, a second officer to act in its place. Before, we used to have two security guards, one police officer, a yellow shirt ambassador, and the operations supervisor. For cost considerations and because the criminal activity has gone down, we've changed it to only be one police officer, one security guard, the operations supervisor, and the yellow shirt ambassador. So in the case that the Columbia police doesn't show up, we could be in a situation where we would have um, somebody on the property that does not have the, the uh, armed abilities if something significant wants to happen. So that was a general concern of the group when we had our meeting, which is why the recommendation out of that group is we should still continue to have the armed security guard. So Ms. Ms. Mood, it's been noted uh, your concern and we will continue to evaluate and um, work with the uh, officers of the agencies of, of Columbia and, and Richland County um, and the private security guards also just to make sure that we stay on top of this. Any other questions from um, the board members? Any other questions concerned us? Hey, yes, this is uh, Chris Lawson here, uh, Mr. Chair. Hey, Mr. Sure. Ando, I have a 
so looking over the documents, um, I see that there are figures listed for the armed guard. However, what's the cost associated with an unarmed guard versus the armed guard? Do we have those numbers? Uh, yes, we do. Um, one second, let me pull that up. The armed rate is $20.35 per hour, and the non-armed rate is $16.95 per hour. Okay. Mr. Lawson, any other questions, Mr. Lawson? Um, yeah, so one other question, Mr. Ando. Um, so the facility um, for using armed guards at or on or around the facility, the facility is locked, right? You cannot have, you cannot gain access to the facility unless you're buzzed in, correct? Uh, no, actually the facility is fairly, the building itself, it has uh, three sets of doors, but with COVID we've limited it to one. But then the police and the security are responsible for patrolling the outdoor bus stop zone which goes from the corner of Sumter and Landing to Sumter and Laurel, and then again, again goes from Laurel and Sumter to a small fast food restaurant at the end of the, at the, end of the property. So most of the occurs happens outside in the bus stop zone versus inside the building. Okay, good copy, thank you. And what, what, what I will do um, also um, to the board, I'm going to ask service standards um, to stay abreast of this issue so we can make sure that um, we have um, the information up to date. And um, I'm asking Ms. Mood if she would um, make sure on her committee that um, we keep up with this matter. We will. Um, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, would you like us at service standards to present like just reports on like what happens in the month if you, if you would if you would work closely with the chair uh, uh, Ms. Moon to, to identify those talking points and and so it would be something that the board can benefit from I would appreciate that we can do that very good any other questions Mr. Chair this is Andy okay. yeah, please. for you to, to John John I just want to make sure I understand kind of where we are after the meeting that you had. Um, I, I, in the finance committee, when this came up, I, I think that I asked something like, what does the contract allow? Does it even allow, does it make a provision for armed and non-armed? Uh, and you said, yes, that the, that the contract allows that. And then of course you just confirmed that the hourly rates differ. But I'd like to know more about what the preference of the security company is. Do they have a, a preference? And then kind of a secondary question. Um, clearly, there's two tiers of security guard at different hourly rates. You know, are these the same population of people? So in other words, is the same person willing to work armed versus unarmed? And then... Um, if if not, then I'd like to know more about the quality of the of the security guard. So those are all questions that I know that can't be answered today, but I, I, I'd like for, you know, as the board continues to discuss this and, and perhaps at the service committee, those those questions be considered. Um, and Mr. Smith, we actually did talk about that in the meeting, so I'm prepared to answer those questions if you like. Uh, well, I, I'm fine either way. If you've got a, a quick response, I don't want to take up too much time, but so the first question, uh, there is the contract provision allows at the comments discretion to select armed or unarmed. 
on the preference of security, a new age would prefer ARM uh, with their history of providing services for the past six years. Um, they said that in the past it's been very challenging there without the police and adding the police in the yellow shirt has significantly made it easier for them to work collaboratively with those um, organizations to help keep Common Central safe and our passengers safe. And then as it relates to the population of the personnel, armed versus non-armed, there are two separate groups. So the persons who have been at Common Central for the past uh, five years are armed. And if we switch to non-armed, there'd be a whole other set of people that would come in to provide those services, not the current personnel that's there. They would more likely be reassigned. Right. And, and so then my follow-up question, and this again is something that the board and the committee can look at is, um, I don't want to, I don't want to put someone who's ill prepared by virtue of being in a separate population of unarmed security guards that's ill prepared to deal with what they might have to deal with at the, at, at Comet Central. And I, I'm not making a, a, I don't have a strong opinion either way. I just, you know, I'd like to know more, I think about, about that. So I'm, I'm going to ask um, Ms. Moo to work closely with uh, Mr. Ando and Mr. Smith to make sure that we get a, a report that the board can benefit it from at our next meeting. So um, I, I'm, Moo, I'm making you, notes of all of those questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moo. Any other questions from the board? Okay, very good. That moves us to item number seven. Motions at this time from the board. Any, any motions that uh, need to be originated from the board and sent back to subcommittee, please um, let it be known now. And Mr. Ando, please let me know if you know of any other um, motions that the um, or, or concerns from the board members that require a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm not aware of any. I know in the service committee that there's going to be a rescheduling of that meeting um, to discuss the performance measures of the, of the transit system as well as vehicle cleaning. Um, and then there is nothing um, out of the finance committee. Okay, very good. That brings us to uh, progress reports item number eight. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, uh, thank the board for allowing the vice chair to step in and help us through this transition until we get a, a chairman. Um, I've worked very closely with the ED and very closely with legal uh, to ensure that there, if there are items, um, they will be brought to your attention either in this meeting or a meeting that will be coming up um, very soon. So with that being said, as far as my chair report, um, I appreciate the subcommittee chairs uh, being um, transparent and also actually putting the, on the agenda uh, some things that they feel that is uh, very um, concerning. So at that time, I'm going to item number B, uh, the COVID, which was... Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Yes. yes. Robert Morris. I, I would just, before you go to B, I would just like to uh, commend you on stepping up uh, to take on this uh, awesome responsibility. And I also would like to welcome uh, Mr. Lawler uh, uh, to the board. So those two uh, items, uh, those two issues need to uh, be shared. Thank you. Thank you. you. Uh, it is noted, uh, Mr. Christopher Lawson, uh, when he first joined uh, a few minutes before we started, uh, we did uh, welcome him to the board. And Mr. Uh, Dr. Morris, I do appreciate you uh, reaching out to Mr. Lawson. I think he's going to be a great asset to the to the board. Um, and Mr. Chair, this is um, yes, Mr. Chair Mike Green. Oh, uh, I think it would also be appropriate if we're still under the uh, consideration of some um, uh, uh, remarks or whatever um, that we uh, do something for the uh, the uh, the outgoing chairman there. Uh, we do yeah. a plaque, or we, we have we have noted that, sir, and um, we will be okay. doing something special for. Um, our I, I, did, I didn't know. I mean, yes, I, and I appreciate you uh, bringing that to uh, the board's attention. We are working to have a uh, um, a presentation to Colonel Lee. So, 
and we will keep you uh, posted on that. Uh, that brings us to um, on the committee chair report to COVID-19. I will ask Mr. Uh, Ando and um, and I also Ms. Moved uh, to help me uh, give a report on this COVID-19. Uh, I can say this committee is a, 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 a first that that really takes in consideration our passengers and our operation staff, um, also our administration staff also. And uh, Mr. Ando, would you like to give an update? And Mr. Deschamps, would you like to give an update on where we are with COVID-19? Uh, yes, and Mr. Deschamps, if you don't mind. Okay, uh, good afternoon to the, to the board. Uh, just a quick update on our COVID-19. Uh, as you can imagine, it still is a priority and a focus uh, for us here to uh, provide whatever we can to make sure that our staff and uh, our operators, especially that are out uh, interfacing customer base, our routers every day, that they're safe. Uh, what we've been doing the last three months is we've been offering covert uh, testing. It's been volunteered uh, in uh, August, September, October, and we were going to have one in November, but because of the Christmas holidays, it actually falls the first week in December, like December 1st and 2nd. And based on all the testing that we have done uh, through that uh, model, there's no staff member or employee that has tested positive. So that's something that we continue to uh, focus on and we'll provide them the support that they need out there. Also, based on where we are, not only as a community or state or country uh, with COVID-19, we, uh, with the direction of the uh, COVID-19 subcommittee, we've decided to extend the COVID testing uh, through the month of January, February, and March to keep our focus there. Uh, so we'll continue to do that. So the next schedule, uh, Testing will be, like I said, December 1st and 2nd. Also, what we've done uh, around the building is we have the temperature check scanners. We have them at the entrance of the administrative building when, that when you come in and also where the employees enter from the uh, employee parking lot. And we also have a temperature scan check up on the second floor as you get off the elevator where uh, this is available to employees uh, once they arrive at work or throughout the day, where if for some reason there is uh, someone that has a, a temperature uh, basically over 100.0, uh, uh, they would notify their immediate supervisor and then the direction would, uh, would be taken there as far as uh, the next step. So uh, those are available to our uh, employee staff uh, we continue to uh, follow our covert uh, policy where we are social distancing on our uh, buses, uh, requiring a mask, uh, being worn uh, by our, our riders. Uh, so we continue to enforce that. We still are providing hand sanitizer wipes and hand sanitizer uh, stations on our uh, uh, fleet also. So that's also being done. And we also emphasize the importance of making sure uh, masks are being worn throughout the building uh, with staff if someone enters your office or you enter someone else's office or you're in a meeting. So we're continuing to uh, focus on, on those things. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we've had good results, but uh, again, it's a, it's a challenge every day because uh, we want uh, them to be able to feel comfortable when they come to work but also when they go back home to their families. So we, we're continuing uh, to do those. And we're continuing basically to follow the, the, the governor's uh, state of emergency as it extends, as he extends that, then uh, we continue to operate at the same level that we're operating services at now. So uh, until that changes, uh, that's the, uh, the, the uh, process that we'll be following here. Uh, and that's kind of like a, uh, basically an overview of what we're doing here uh, at the facility, but also uh, making sure that the operators know that uh, we have a concern about their well-being. And also, too, we're still uh, doing entry 
uh, at the rear door. So all of those things are, and all those different protocols are still in place. And so far, we've had good results. But again, you, uh, you can't lose sight uh, because it, it only takes one. And uh, then when you do contact tracing, you can see how a situation like this can and spread, but also how it can impact uh, people and especially employees, but more importantly, families also. So that continues to be a focus of ours. Just as a, as a whole team, it, it takes everyone reminding everyone what their responsibility is in this. Thank you, Mr. Shams. Any questions for Mr. Shams or Ando or Huggins from the board? Mr. Huggins, yes. I, I'd like to add just a, a couple of things um, from the from the um, committee. Is that uh, as Leroy? Um, ex explained we have not found any, um, had any positive test from our scheduled testing with the uh, medical group, but we have had a very few um, of our employees who have become COVID positive and, and, would, uh, and they identified that from, from, from testing outside of our um, in-house testing. And so I, I want the board to know that what has happened in those situations is that we follow the guidance for quarantine for anyone who is um, who has found themselves to be COVID positive, and and when they before they return to work after the um, specified quarantine period, they bring evidence of a negative um, COVID test, and when we do have someone who reports that they have tested positive. We do let the public know that, and uh, um, if it's a driver, what routes he was on, so that um, that riders, if they have concerns, can get themselves can tested at any of the sites that are available to them, and we make those resources for testing sites known to our riders. Um, did I get that right, Leroy? Oh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I just, I mean, that was reassuring to me, and I wanted the rest of the board to know that. Thank you for that supplemental report. Um, also, I want to thank the staff for working so hard to, to ensure that um, everyone stays as safe as possible during this, this situation. Um, that moves, uh, any other questions from the board? Very good. That moves us to uh, Intermodal Committee uh, updates. I'm going to ask Mr. Ando um, to speak on, on this one uh, for us. I guess, Mr. Vice Chairman, members of the board. The Intermodal Committee uh, met in uh, late October, and the focus was discussing the next steps towards planning an intermodal uh, facility. And as part of the development of the intermodal facility, the focus would be incorporating rail, inner city bus, and some of our bus, our local buses that may traverse the proposed selected site. Um, the committee is reviewing site locations, and we have engaged Amtrak to help us in the identification of site locations. The next step is uh, we're waiting for more information from Amtrak, and the committee will meet again to take the next step towards um, implementing what would be basically a, a development plan on how we would construct an intermodal facility. Any questions for Mr. Ando on, on the um, a subject of intermodal from the board? Thank you, Mr. Ando. Uh, the next item is service committee. Ms. Ms. Moog. Yes, um, at the sur at the service committee's last scheduled meeting, um, we were Mr. Ando and I were approached by Mr. Robert Smith from RAPDEV just before the meeting started to let us know that they were not um, going to be able to have the appropriate people or data available to, um, to participate in the service committee meeting. We didn't have any action items on our agenda. Our agenda is entirely an, a discussion of the updates on information. And so um, Mr. Smith asked if we could um, defer that either you know, to a later time, and we decided to, uh, to, to not um, spend unnecessary time of committee members and without the appropriate people and data. And so we uh, agreed to postpone the service committee date, and that will be um, rescheduled by the staff. Thank you, Ms. Moon. So we simply, we just, we simply um, uh, 
convene the meeting, let the committee members know about just what I've told you, and then adjourned. Thank you. Any questions from Ms. Moo on the service committee from the board? Thank you. That brings us to Mr. Smith, Finance Committee. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Huggins. Uh, Finance Committee was scheduled to meet on November 11th, uh, but that was Veterans Day. So we rescheduled to the 13th this past Friday. I uh, had a productive meeting that I mean, we looked over our um, financial performance through the first quarter of 2020, received a report from our finance director, uh, Ms. Rosalind Andrews, um, were able to ask questions. We also received um, a report from Dr. Prince on DBE performance. Uh, Dr. Prince presented a uh, a really uh, nice one-page document that shows uh, DBE performance by contract, including the, the prime contractor, but then also a total um, DBE performance for the whole agency. And that's really, it was a really easy tool for us to look at and see where we're, how we're doing compared to our goals for both the prime contractor and as an agency. Um, so we commended Dr. Prince for putting that together for us, and uh, she intends to keep that report reporting mechanism going. Uh, we then considered two items: um, the the request to increase the subsidy on Lyft and Uber that actually came out of the last regular board meeting, um, based on some route changes and things. Um, that was a a proposed resolution to to the fact that a handful of folks were, were going to lose their normal um, transit options. So increasing that subsidy, we took a look at that, made a recommendation to the full board that you, the we as a board adopted during the consent calendar for this meeting. Same thing with the um, uh, propane contract for, uh, we, we recommended the board authorize um, the, the executive director to enter into a Contact, contract negotiations with Palmetto Propane. Uh, again, that was in our consent calendar for this meeting today. Uh, otherwise, that was it. It's a pretty brief meeting, um, and I think on the whole, a really productive meeting. I want to reiterate uh, Mr. Um, Smith's um, comments about Ms. Prince and her diligence of getting a good report out um, with our DBE program. Any questions uh, for Mr. Smith? On finance on the board. I, I, I just like to say we did. I was very. This is Miss Dickerson. Um, I was yes, very impressed with Dr. Prince's report. It was very comprehensive, very concise, and she did an excellent job. And I really appreciated the information. And I'm gonna probably be sneaking away in a few seconds or minutes. Okay. <laughs> Thank but you, Dr. Thank Prince, you did an excellent job. Thank you, and under the under the guidance of um, Mr. Andor. Thank you. And um, Ms. Sheridan, please make sure that that's highlighted in our, our minutes. Um, Dr. Prince's work. All right. Any other questions on finance? Thank you. That brings us to Executive Director's report, Mr. Andor. Yes, Mr. Vice Chairman and members of the board. Uh, my report on pages 93 through a 97 of the packet. Uh, basically gives you a summary of activities that Common Staff has performed from October 24th to November 13th, um, each of the key items that are uh, from each department. Um, I do want to also highlight as part of this report, on pages 98 through uh, 102, um, or it's a draft uh, policy number nine for this board to review. Uh, this was developed uh, in conjunction with uh, the previous chairman um, as developing a board policy for dispensing action items and also setting a time limit for a board meeting. Um, with discussions with the, the current vice chairman, he asked that I provide this as a draft for the board members to review and comment on and then to submit comments either to myself or to him for consideration meaning to discuss this and take appropriate action. And, and let me add one, one more thing. I really do appreciate um, Colonel Leakes um, getting this uh, report started. I know some of the um, board members uh, from the last meeting were wanting to see a more streamlined process. 
and not only will we be asking for you to have some um, uh, contributions towards this document, but I will be personally contacting advisory board members and board members on this issue to ensure that we get a, uh, a more streamlined process and also uh, a lot more work before meetings to ensure that uh, we can streamline the process and not try to iron things out in board meetings. So, so with that being said, Mr. Ando, do you have any other uh, contributions towards your report? Uh, yes, um, and then page 103 is our community outreach um, report that we were provide we provide to the board as part of board policy number six, and then lastly, all of the active motions that are on the um, on the floor for the board to consider, which will be uh, brought up at the next at the next meeting. And just to let you know, um, uh, board members, I'm going to be working very closely with staff and legal. Um, it's um, uh, Council Baker. Uh, just to make sure that we have all the uh, items that need to be addressed um, and I will be forthcoming that information as soon as possible to the board. So thank you. Um, any questions for Mr. Ando from the board? Very good. Can I get a motion to adjourn this meeting, please? So moved. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Uh, Chair? Mark? Dr. Morris. Uh, I had my phone on mute. I'm sorry. Uh, I have one question before you adjourn. Yes. Uh, um, um, to Ms. Andor, if you will. Committee agendas will be prepared by or at the direction of the executive director in consultation with the chair of each committee. Uh, was that included in the revised board governance manual? Um, that was a policy that was adopted previously, so there's no changes to that. Um, okay. But yeah, it is, but it is in the board governance manual that were delivered to members in the past uh, month. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Dr. Mark, thank you. Any other questions for uh, Mr. Ando? Can I get a motion to uh, adjourn this meeting, please? So moved. Okay, it's been moved by Ms. Dickerson and Ms. Moot. Is that right? Uh, Mr. Burgess. Yeah. Mr. Burgess. Mr. Burgess. Okay, very good. Um, do we need to do a roll call or are we okay with this? We're good. We're very good. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Very good meeting. Bye.